there are quite large vertical forces when you run. Normal recreational runners land with two to two and a half times their body weight. Really fast runners put more stress on their bodies because they need more force to run fast. But if you're not an elite runner, think about how much you weigh and you double that and then you add a little more weight. Then you get the weight you put on your body when you land while running. And remember, you also receive this on one leg at the time, not two. And you do this perhaps 165 to 185 times per minute for a very long time. No wonder so many runners do their absolute best to try to reduce these forces. Because here's the thing, high vertical forces can cause different types of running injuries. If you are walking or lying down in bed, you are exposing your body to low or no vertical forces and are therefore quite guaranteed not to get a running injury. But I also think that vertical forces have an undeserved bad reputation. Firstly, we are constantly exposed to vertical forces as gravity pulls us down towards the ground. And we are actually quite good at dealing with these forces. It's a bit like that you can die if you drink too much water, but that doesn't mean that water in the right amount that we can handle is something to be afraid of. If you can handle the vertical forces, they can be good. They can help us. For example, the vertical forces are an important part of the stretch shortening cycle that makes you more energy efficient. But more about that in another video. And speaking of other videos, I hope you can click like on this video and subscribe to my channel. This will help me make more and more in-depth videos in the future. But back to the vertical forces. There are some gadgets that you can wear that can measure vertical forces and that is forces going from the ground straight up in your body when you land. Even if you don't have a device that measures this, we are pretty good at feeling these forces. We feel how hard and heavy we land. Since many runners suffer from injuries, they want to reduce the vertical forces, which means that they start experimenting with their running technique to achieve this. And this is where things can go wrong. Perhaps the easiest way to reduce vertical forces is to put your feet a little further forward land a little bit more in front of your center of mass. If you are moving the landing forward just a tiny, tiny bit, the forces will decrease immediately. And as I said, we are quite good at feeling these forces. However, we are not so good at feeling how far ahead of our center of mass we are landing. There is therefore a risk that we make some kind of adjustments that make us land a little, just a tiny bit further in front of our center of mass. And then we can feel or see only in on our watch or whatever device we have that the vertical forces have decreased. And then of course we are happy because we have achieved our goal to lower the vertical forces. That could be the reason why it feels so heavy and or that you have pain in your knees or in your hip. The problem is that we may instead have increased other forces that we don't feel as clearly, but which can be very bad for our running and perhaps even more damaging. Let me show you what I mean. I ran twice on my treadmill. Once when I landed under my center of mass quite well and once with overstride. Here you can see where I landed on the two tests. So I landed 64.3 millimeters, about two and a half inches in front of my center of mass when I ran normally and 150 millimeters, 5.9 inches when I deliberately ran with overstride. Then we look at the vertical forces and just like I said, they have dropped quite a bit when I ran with overstride. And that must be good news, because we wanted to lower the vertical forces, right? But we can also look at what happened to the braking forces. I have made a separate video about that overstride not always leading to braking forces, but as I also say in that video, the risk of greater braking forces increases as soon as you land a little further forward. And that is exactly what happened here. The landing further forward gave higher braking forces. 
And now we can look at the lateral forces. It's how much and how quickly you move your center of mass laterally, going sideways. Something that also increases lateral forces in the knees and in the hips. And this causes you to leak energy laterally and it also increases the risk of injuries in these areas. The lateral forces have also increased a lot. This means that my overstride has in and of itself reduced the vertical force but instead increased both braking forces and lateral forces. And since, as I said, we're quite good at taking care of the vertical forces unlike, for example, lateral forces in the knees and the vertical forces also can be good for the stretch shortening cycle. It's a rather bad trade-off. And this is what happened here. My energy return from the stretch shortening cycle went from 36.3%, which is classified as excellent by the program, to 13.6%, which is classified as poor. And looking at my overall energy efficiency, it went from an A+, plus with the higher vertical forces, to a C when I ran with overstride. Of course, it can be good to both reduce braking forces, lateral forces and the vertical forces if you now need it. And if you want to reduce vertical forces, you can do it in a lot more ways than starting to run with overstride. For example, by increasing the cadence. But, like I said, we're pretty good at taking care of vertical forces and they can help you be more energy efficient. But I will develop that more in a completely separate video. For now, this video ends with your take-home message. Yes, less vertical forces can be good for some runners. But remember, just because I have reduced vertical forces, I may have simultaneously increased forces in other places in my body. And that both increases the risk of injury and made my running cost significantly more energy. And that's it for today. See you in the next video. I truly hope you liked that video. And if you did, please click the like button and maybe also the subscribe button. And feel free to check out all the other content I have here on my channel. And maybe you are also interested in my online course. You'll find it at fredrickzillen.com.